say to those of you all who are celebrating Thanksgiving and we Muslims too that's not an issue for us as Muslims though it's not our holiday we say to you happy Thanksgiving and we are prayerful that you enjoy time with your family your friends uh, those of you all who are traveling be careful be safe 
I'm, I'm hearing, and I'm sure if you're keeping up, you hear the same thing I hear, not so <clears throat> pleasant news about a new variant from South Africa of this virus. So we ask Allah's mercy, his peace and blessings on mankind <clears throat> that he remove this pandemic from this earth. Greetings of peace to our brothers who are here and our sister. Uh, our message is not open. Uh, so we have just a few people come by on Fridays and we allow them to come into the masjid. Those of you all who are at home, peace be with you. Our members, assalamu alaikum to you. Our Christian family members, friends, neighbors, peace be with you to our Jewish friends and family members and neighbors, shalom, shalom. And I know you have uh, uh, Hanukkah coming up, I believe in a couple of days. So blessed and happy Hanukkah to you all, our Jewish friends. <clears throat> now, on the uh, line of Facebook live in our Juma conference line, that's what's on my mind, the Juma conference line. Greetings to you all, so you all on our Juma conference line. We have people from all over the United States of America, from the East Coast to the West Coast. And I'm, I don't want to say I'm amazed, but I am uh, happy. I'll use that since we said Happy Thanksgiving. I am happy and also honored that you all are consistently over a number of years now, not just with the pandemic, I'm talking about in the thousands, in the thousands, every week, join us uh, for Juma prayer every Friday. We average at least about 5,000 people a week. Average, and this is across the United States of America, and also in the international community, by Allah's grace. But we would not be able to do that if it wasn't for modern technology. So science has made it possible. They used to have the old saying, you can't be in more than one place at one time. Well, yes, we can. You can be all over the world. You can be in a whole lot of places at one time now. So I just want to say thank you all for that, uh, for honoring honoring us and honoring me personally, for joining us every week for Juma by the numbers. And many of you all are sharing it throughout the United States of America, from the West Coast to the East Coast, North and South, and in that international community. Not a week goes by that they're uh, without having new people that wasn't on here the week before, the week before. And that's why I, I, I'm, I'm mindful of it and I consistently just cover basic things that some of you all have heard me say for over and over and over. But because we have new people and they don't know and they don't know what we're doing and some of them are joining us for the first time. So you honor us by your consistent presence. Greetings to my family. Uh, I miss you all. Usually I would be either with them in the Soto, Islamic Association of Soto, Texas, during the holidays, but because of COVID and the travel, I'm, I'm being as cautious as I can. We know a lot most best, but I'm being as cautious as I can. So greetings to you all, my family in DeSoto, my extended family, friends and brothers and sisters there in the Soto community. Greetings to family and friends in Bermuda, and also our sister Junaina Abdullah from Malaysia and so many other countries around the world. Greetings to all of you all and welcome. And I want to begin, since this is, and I don't know if this is a, a, a holiday all over the world, but I do know it's a national holiday, Thanksgiving. But it's not, so Muslims now, I'm speaking to you, the non-Muslims, so they understand, uh, this, this is not a quote unquote Muslim holiday, but there is nothing wrong with the Muslims participating and observing. Why? Because in our religion, gratitude is one of those virtues and principles that our religion encourages us to embody, to embody gratitude. So I'm just going to give you one, one or two verses here to begin the Jamaat. <clears throat> and our subject is, of course, some of the signs of Allah, the fourth part of the series I had started some weeks ago and we'll conclude it today. Chapter 14, Abraham or Ibrahim. Chapter 14, Ibrahim or Abraham. Who is, as you know, Christians, Jews, Muslims. He is the leader, 
Amen. Bible calls him the father of the nations. So Ibrahim is the faith father. Muslims, Jews, Christians, all of us accept him. No, no dispute, no debate on that issue. That Abraham is the leader for the religious communities. He is the first imam. First imam. Allah calls him imam in the Quran. So he's imam lil alimin. He's imam to the world, to the nations. So before Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, established the office of Imam, Ibrahim was the Imam. He was the leader. Yes. And he established the Kaaba in Mecca. Yes, he built that. He and his son Ishmael. We know history. That's not my lecture today. I'm saying this to our Christian brothers and sisters and our Jewish brothers and sisters and our Muslims. So you all know we have that in common. And the 14th chapter of the Quran is Ibrahim. You'll find many of the chapters uh, pay tribute to the prophets by titles and names. And uh, I don't know of, uh, I'm thinking real quick before I say it, because I have to, it has to be in the Old Testament. But I don't know of a, a book in the Old Testament that's titled Abraham. Doesn't come to my mind. I don't know of a book in the Old Testament titled Abraham. <clears throat> I don't believe it is. But the 14th chapter of the Quran is Ibrahim or Abraham. Now this is on thanks and gratitude. Thanksgiving. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Verse 7 and 8. Then we'll go to our main topic. <clears throat> and I apologize for our early technical difficulties, but this is live. So when it's live, you got to go with the flow, okay? وَإِذْ وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَا رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِّدَنَّكُمْ لَأَزِّدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِنْ كَثَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابٍ عَذَابٍ لَشَدِيدٍ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ God the mighty spoke the truth. It's revelation to Muhammad the prophet in the Quran. <clears throat> and remember, your Lord calls to be declared. Now this is revelation to Muhammad the prophet. Prayers and peace be upon him. Remember your Lord calls to be declared publicly. If you are grateful, and the word shakartum, shak, shakir, Shaka, shukran, shaka, shukran. So when someone exchanges something to a Muslim or gives something to a Muslim or receives something, receive it. Someone give you something, we say what? Shukran, S-H-U-K-R-A-N, shukran, shakaratum. And the response is, Afwan, you are welcome. And remember your Lord calls to be declared, if you are thankful, if you are grateful, I will increase my favors. I will add more blessings, more favors. I will increase more favors unto you. But if you show ingratitude, kathartum. So, shekartum, gratitude. Kathartum, ingratitude. But if you show ingratitude, truly my punishment is terrible indeed. So God says to us that if we express thanks, happy thanksgiving to all of you. And not just on Thanksgiving Day once a year in America, no. But grateful and gratitude every day that God bless us with life. We're in the middle of a pandemic, as we all know. America alone has lost nearly 800, now I'm talking about gratitude now, 800,000 people dead, God rest their souls. Five, more than five million in the world, all over the world, dead, God rest their souls. But here we are, here I am, you here, in present, by God's grace, you all out on Facebook, we'll be, watch us on YouTube later, 
Jumaan conference line all over the country, all over the world. Are you telling me that we don't have anything to be grateful and thankful for living in the middle of a pandemic? And we're not in a hospital intubated on a ventilator. No. We up, we moving about, God is blessing us. So I don't have to wait for Thanksgiving to be grateful. We have a lot to be grateful. If you have your health right now, you all out there, you all here, you have health, well you have to have health to be here. Be grateful to Allah for that. Thanksgiving was yesterday. The turkey day was yesterday. I'm sure you got some left over. But it's more than that. Now, in America, I just have to be honest, but I saw the, I saw the uh, news clipping on it. And they interviewed them, the Native Americans. This wasn't a happy day for them in their history. This was a day of mourning for them. Mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. They were mourning, grieving, because of the slaughter and the murder of the Native Americans back in behind us. Okay? So they have a different take on this whole Thanksgiving thing. However, I'm reading from the Quran. I'm reading from Scripture. I'm speaking generally. I'm speaking more broadly than one day of the year. So God revealed this to Prophet Muhammad. There was no America when this verse was revealed. You understand? There was, there was little, little colonies or little states in, in certain parts of the uh, uh, Europe, European world we call it now. Well, you didn't have any great powers like you have except ancient civilizations. Ancient Egypt, maybe. Ancient Rome and Greece, and they saw themselves rise and fall. So there was no United States of America 1400 years ago when this verse was revealed to Prophet Muhammad. I'm talking to the Muslims. So the concept of thanks, gratitude, shukran, was given to our Prophet Muhammad before the United States of America. So be careful what you criticize. Go study your scripture. Verse 8. Musa. Well, go back to Moses. Waqala Musa in Takfuru. Wa antum wa man fil ardi jami'an. Fa inna Allah la ghaniyun hamid. So the Kalalade, God the mighty, spoke the truth. And Moses said, if you show gratitude. Okay, so I'm reading from the chapter of Abraham, 14, and I'm reading what God revealed to Prophet Muhammad about gratitude. And now he includes Moses. And Moses said to his people, this is before the United States of America. Mm, this is before the pilgrims. You understand? If you show gratitude, pardon me, pardon me, if you show ingratitude, if you show ingratitude, if you're ungrateful, you and all on earth together, if all of you are ungrateful to God for what he's blessed you with, just bringing you into existence, yet is a law Free of all wants, worthy of all praise. What is that suggesting to us? That God is not disturbed by our ingratitude. <laughs> we don't say praise be to Allah, He's not bothered. He gives us everything for our life, air, water, sun, everything, and we don't show any appreciation for it. God doesn't bother God. God is not disturbed at all. So the Allah. So Prophet Muhammad said, Moses told his people, if you show your gratitude, God is not affected by that. God is not bothered by that. No, not at all. Yes, brothers, please, you all get the mask. Yeah, come on. Psycho. Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, Ron, you don't mind, my friend, whether you can you sit back there. Ahmed is not here. And make sure everybody come in. Get a mask. Get a mask. So our brothers, they know. They come regularly for the joint. So they know. But we may have some people come in not aware of that. So we're still cautious now. We want to be careful. No, I'm not being paranoid. I'm being careful. 
And I have people here that I'm uh, accountable and responsible for when they step inside this building. So I have to make sure that we are safe as we possibly can. I hope you all can understand that. All right. So you, you, you're watching me. You can't see the door, but I can see the door. So if we come in, we just want to make sure that we all are safe. And you notice what we don't do. I mentioned this before. We don't, we don't ask you if you are vaccinated. We don't ask you that. So we expect you to mask up. And I may we do take that temperature check back there too, right? With that thermometer on that table back there. He'd take that temperature check. And we do ask you if you are ill and sick, not just here in Jacksonville, anywhere, and not just for Muslims, Christian Jews. If you are ill or sick and you test positive, go quarantine. Don't be around people. Okay? Be considerate of others. That's what we ask you. Okay? So Moses said, if you show ingratitude, you and all on earth together, yet is Allah free of all wants, and he is worthy of all praise. He doesn't need your gratitude. All right. So I just wanted to begin the Juma with that, that this, our religion, is an advocate. Al-Islam advocates, promotes Gratitude. And God rejects ingratitude. Now chapter 30, so we conclude, Arum. Now here's another chapter. The Catholics. That's another way I could translate it. Though it's Romans. Uh, it's Romans. The Romans. But the Romans who were the religion. Catholicism, the head of the seat of the Catholics, is the Romans. The Vatican. The Romans. Okay? This is chapter 30, verse 24. So I, I began, so this is part four, some of the signs of Allah. Part four, and this is the conclusion of it this week, Jamar, inshallah. So we started, for those of you all joining us for the first time, we started three weeks ago, or four weeks ago, on verse 20. So you can go back and read, or you can scroll down on Masjid Muhammad's Facebook page, or Alistair Worldwide Ministry, you can find it on YouTube, or Imam Yahya, scroll down, and you can get all of the previous Jumas before, if you would like. All right, so verse 24, we start on verse 20, so here now, verse 24 and 25 to conclude this series on some of the signs of Allah. Wa min ayatihi yurikumul barqa kawfan wa tama'an وَيُنَزِّلُوا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَيُحْيِي بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا إِنَّا فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَعْقِلُونَ صدق الله العظيم God Almighty spoke the truth. Now if you're all a little uncomfortable and it feels a little cool, we can turn that heater on right behind you, Abdul, if it gets cool. Okay, we don't want you to be uncomfortable. I turned the heater on earlier to not to chill off, but if it cools off a little bit, yeah, it's the it's just fall time for us in Florida. So if it cools off a, a little bit, we can just turn the heat on and make everyone comfortable, if you like. And among his signs, God, Allah signs, among his signs, he shows you the lightning. Okay, here we go. And Barak. B-A-R-Q. Barak. And they say, this is symbolic, metaphorical language, picture language, that the steed, the horse, the camel or whatever, but the horse or the steed, that the prophet was on was called Barak. Barak. And Barak, B-A-R-A-K, Q, sounds to me like Barak, B-R-K. Only difference is the K, K. The other words are the same. Barak, blessings. Barak, lightning. Well, lightning is a blessing. We have electric, you see these lights in here? Electricity. I'm speaking on this microphone. Uh, thank you, Ron, for sorting it out. You and Ishmael fixing it. This is electricity. 
Where does it come from? Lightning. Benjamin Franklin in America did the experiment with the kite. Lightning. Man used to fear lightning. So Allah gave the Prophet Muhammad before Benjamin Franklin. And among his signs, he shows you the lightning by way both of fear, and this is fear now, khawthim. This is not taqwa or kashia. This is khawthim. <laughs> More of fear. And he shows you the lightning by way both of fear wa tama'an and hope. Tama'an. And he sends down so the lightning now here's the flow of this. And he sends down Allah, this is God. And he sends down rain from the skies or from the sky. And with the rain, it gives life to the earth after it is dead. This is after it dies. The, the rain, God says, come down with the lightning. And science tells us that the lightning charges the rain. It energizes it. And as a result, it has nitrates in it. Energy. So when it hits the earth, remember this is a sign that God says. When it hits the earth, it energizes and charges the soil and gives it the energy to yield production. Mm. So even though it's liquid, it has matter in it. Nitrates, the rain, boom, from the lightning, energizing it. Well, if I would tell you in the language of Imam Muhammad, God grabbed the high station paradise, that this is a reference to the influence of scripture. And how, hmm, well, it's in scripture, so it has a scripture reference, right? And Allah says in Surah Baqarah, say, and the lightning flashes. And when the man see the lightning, the people see the light, they move. But when darkness sets in, they stand still. I'm paraphrasing it, okay? Making a connection. Light, move. Dark, stand still. Revelation, however, is more like the sunshine than lightning. Because <laughs> it's always light. It's always shining. And there's a chapter in the Quran there's no chapter in the Quran titled Lightning. The verses in the Quran are Lightning, but no chapter. Because the focus that God wants on the bigger light, the bigger light, the two lights, three of them actually, Shams, the sun. There's a chapter in the Quran titled Shams. Kamar, the moon, big light out there at nighttime, sometimes sure in the day. There's a chapter. Nejmun and Nejmun, the stars that shine up in the skies. When it's darkness, you get all those stars up there. And it ain't no one star. Many, you can't count the stars. There's so many. As the great poet says, the day has but one eye and the night a thousand. And he just used a thousand just to describe it. But it's more than a thousand. So, brothers, sisters, in America, around the world, there's space, there's room. For all of us to shine like the stars. And in a dark world, you don't need any one light. You need as many lights as you can get. So God is, with that big, that sign, is encouraging us, as the Christians say, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Huh? Like the star. So if you're living in these dark neighborhoods, Living in these dark nations, living in dark times and environment, you be the starlight. You be the one twinkling in the dark. You be the one pulsating energy and life around everybody. You can. don't you? Don't you be the falling star? Don't you be the meteor that burns out? No, you pulsate. 
Paul say, shine like the stars shine at night. And Lord knows we need as many as we can get in this world right now. So ain't no point in being jealous, is it? You don't see the stars mad with each other, jealous of each other. They respect each other's space. Enough room for everybody. All right. So what does our scholars tell us now? Okay. And among his signs, he shows you the lightning by way both of faith, fear, pardon me, powerful and what come on, and hope. Not just fear, hope. And he sends down rain from the sky and with it, gives life to the earth after it is dead. Yeah, in that, Allah says, are signs, ayats, instructing signs for those who are wise. And I just told you, shared with you, that not only this verse, but the verses in Baqarah and other places in the Quran is the introduction to Muhammad the prophet of electricity. Right there. Electricity. Electricity. And electricity has become so powerful now, I mentioned this last week, that all of our vehicles in the relatively short span of time, some of them right now, will be run by electricity from the Quran. Now, when this was revealed, nobody, nobody had electricity. They had oil lamps, wood, wood light, light from the wood. Light it up, right? And you still have that now in the five places. They still have that. Or in five places. But look what God told Prophet Muhammad. I'm sending the lightning. Now it's going to scare you. But there's hope in it. And you can't see the thumb of eye right now. Just hold on. And as man evolve over time. Oh, he's not going to be afraid of that lightning no more now. So you should respect it, though. Yeah, you certain things you shouldn't be doing in the lightning. They tell you that. You can look it up and Google it. Be careful. Because it's, it's, it's very dangerous if you... But God wants us to do what with it? And man has done it. Harness it. Harness the lightning. And make that lightning and turn it and convert it into electricity. To power your homes, your businesses, and now your cars, and your trucks, and your planes, and everything is going to be powered by the lightning, the basis of it, electricity. So here's what, what the scholars say. But no. To cowards, and I'm quoting, to cowards, from Abdul Yusuf Ali's translation, bottom, these are a collection of scholars because this is the 11th edition. To cowards, lightning and thunder appear. Now there's a chapter of thunder. A rod. The thunder. Mm -hmm. That's chapter 13. To cowards, lightning and thunder appear as terrible forces of nature. Lightning seems to kill and destroy where its irresistible progress is not assisted by proper lightning. Pardon me, by proper lightning conductors. But lightning is also a herald, H E R A L D, an announcer of rain bearing clouds and showers that bring fertility and prosperity. This double aspect is also symbolical of spiritual fears and spiritual hopes. That's what they say. Fears lest we may not be found receptive or worthy of the irresistible, perspicuous, that means open and plain, perspicuous message of Allah. And hopes that we may receive in the right spirit and be blessed by his mighty power of transformation to achieve spiritual well-being. Note that the repetition of the phrase gives life to the earth after it is dead, connects this verse with the verse 19 previously above. In other words, the revelation which we must receive of wisdom and understanding, and I just connected that with the revelation, is a sign of Allah's own power and mercy and is safe in order to safeguard, safeguard, G-U-A-R-D, our own final future. 
Now verse 25. Wa min ayatihi an taqtaquma taquma taquma as-samaa'u wal-ardu bi amrihi thumma idha da'akum da'watan min min al-ardi idha antum takhrajun. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah, the mighty spoke the truth to Muhammad the prophet. Prophet is revelation. <laughs> and among his signs is this. So after telling us about the lightning, the fear and the hope, the rain that energizes the earth and yields production, here's the next one and this is the last verse of these signs from 20 to 25. And among his signs is this, the heaven, the sky, and the earth stand up by his command. By his command. Then when he calls you by a single call, he invites you, call you from the earth. Behold, you come forward. You come out. You come forward to the infinite. Thank you, my brother. You come forward when he calls you from the earth. Behold, you come forward. All right. So now here's another sign now. God tells us. The prophet Muhammad. But let me read the commentary. And I'll make mine from the scholars. In the physical world. The sky footnote. The sky and the earth as we see them. Stand unsupported. By the artistry of Allah. They bear witness to Allah. In that our physical life, our physical life depends on them. The earth for its problems and the sky for its rain, the heat of the sun and other phenomena of nature. They call to our mind, our relationship to Allah who made them and us. How can we then be so dense as not to realize that our high future is bound up with the call and the mercy of God. Okay. So among his signs, and, and I'm going to share something with you that what I did this week because I was, I was, and I'm always fascinated by nature. I love, I love science. So God says among his signs, among his signs, science, signs, connection. You see the sky and the earth held up seemingly with no support. So I'm going for my walk the other day and I looked up at the sky. It wasn't nighttime, it was day. And I've seen this thousands of times. And I looked up and I'm looking at a full moon. Beautiful moon just sitting in the sky, suspended in the sky. I couldn't take my eyes off. And I'm marveling because I know the verse in the Quran that says, He holds up the heavens without any pillars, P I L A R S, or supports that you can see. Didn't say there was none there. You can't see them. Science have to tell us about it. So, I was so fascinated by it. And then I asked myself the question. I said, why is that moon not falling? Because I can't see anything. You all are sitting on chairs. Some of you are sitting on chairs, sitting on the floor. The floor is a support too. We sit things on tables. I have my books here, sitting on the table here, rostrum here. We need supports. I'm standing on the floor. Gravity is holding us down. We need support. But if you look up there, this is massive structure round just that it's just sitting there you know? and I'm saying why is it not falling so you know what I do I'm a researcher doc like you my friend Rashid and I'm doing it too he's very good both of them we have the world's knowledge at our fingertips right now so I didn't have to go to a library. I went to the library of Google. And my question to Google, shape Google, was, that's what I call it, shape Google. <laughs> Why is not the moon falling? Now I 
heard the scientific theory before. So, to my surprise, as soon as I threw with that, there's a video that came up of a scientist, astrophysicist, astronomer, lady, explaining the science, really, the moon is always falling. So, I'm watching this, and I'm like, it's always falling. Yes. The gravity of the earth is pulling it. So it's not just sitting there. But it's falling at such a speed that it's rotating, a spinning around the earth, and it has to maintain a certain speed. That just blew my mind. If it goes too fast, the earth grabs. If it slows down from the speed that Allah put it on, it drifts off into space further. So it has to follow the exact speed, spin it around the earth, because it's falling towards the earth all the time. But the reason it doesn't drop out of the sky, because it stays at the equilibrium speed that Allah has created for. And all I could say was Allahu Akbar. Because I could see the insight in it right away having been a student of Imam W.D. Muhammad. I said, well, that's the way we are. That if we maintain a certain disposition and a certain equilibrium and balance and pace in our life and revolve around what God has asked us to command us to do, gravity won't destroy us and the culture forces won't snatch us away from our obedience to God if we maintain our precision and our obedience and our equilibrium and live a balanced life, all the gravity and the culture can be pulling and yanking, but it won't pull us in and burn us up. <laughs> Among his signs of the planets that you see sitting up there with no pillars that you can see and as I conclude this, first part of Jumma, Imam W. Muhammad, God grabbed the high station in paradise. He said, now look to apply. I just made a connection. Here's another one. He said, you know one of the lessons Allah wants us to get from that? These massive bodies that he holds up, it ain't nothing there. You can see supporting it. If God can do that, he can hold you up. Your 200 pound frame. I don't know, I'm not 200 pounds. My 185 and 187, whatever it is. 510, 187. He can hold you up. But how is he holding us up? How do, how do, what force holds us up? What force keeps us going? Iman. Iman. Bill. Life. Faith. And what we can't see. So if we keep our faith and we feed that faith with salat and we feed prayer and we feed that faith with the word of God and we feed that faith occasionally for the job, collect when we can, it will hold us up in a culture and a society that's wiping people out left and right. Nothing, they have nothing supporting their spirit. They have nothing supporting their souls. They have nothing supporting their minds. So the negativity, the gravity is too strong for them. Doc, you work with them. They can't handle it. So drinking overcomes their life. Weed, marijuana takes over their life. Opioids and drugs and fentanyl takes over their life. Heroin takes over their life. Cocaine takes over their life. Women take over their life. Men take over their life. Greed and money and corruption to the extreme take over their life. Because there's nothing wrong with money. It's how you use money. And I, somebody post correctly and said, well, if money was the root of all evil, why the church asked you to donate it on Sunday? I said, you know, I never thought about that one. That's a good one. They always say, put the money in the bucket, brother. But these are the things that's wiping people out in America, in the culture. I'm talking in the culture now, the negative culture. And across the world community, the international global community, 
The cultural gravity is strong with a pull of the cultural gravity, the, the cultural icons, the, the, the people that they give it to follow and to emulate and images that they put out, the music, the songs, the entertainment, all of it has influences and it's constantly putting on the soul and the spirit. And if you don't have anything to hold you up, faith, like the invisible force, and it's invisible, the invisible force that holds up the sun and the moon and the stars, and it's in faith, it's an invisible force that can hold us up in this culture, in this society, in this country, America, and all over the world. If you maintain faith, if you don't have any, you need to get some, especially in America. And, and, and I'm always pleased to see our brothers from overseas, they come. Because uh, it's so easy for them. In their countries, many of their countries, my brother Saudi Arabia, I've been there many times. And you heard me say, I really love them, respect them in all these countries. But they pray five times a day. Call it, shut it down, business stop, move. Hey, let's go to the masjid, at your shop, at the stores. They don't want to go to the masjid, they pray. They're so used to prayer five times a day. In other Muslim countries too, where their van is called in public. And those, it doesn't make them angels. It doesn't make them saints. It doesn't make them sinless. But what it does is keep their society from a trajectory of moral collapse, social collapse, spiritual collapse, like the Western nations are going through. Notice what I just said. So I don't need anybody to send me a comment and text me. Well, you know they got this problem together. I already know. But the, the Bible, I believe, says those who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. We live in the most glassiest house in the world. We should, we should be outlawing stones. So don't be throwing stones at people around the world, the United States of America. We got a lot. As our president Biden says, we have a lot of battle, a lot of work to do to fight, to save the soul. That's how he frames it. The soul of the nation. He said we're fighting for the soul of the nation. When you hear a president of the United States of America speak like that on spiritual matters, it's a problem. It's a big problem. Because they usually focus on economics and politics and all that. And he is. But when he's beating that drum beat, he sits at the high levels. They can see it. They have advisors. And they don't just have political advisors and economic advisors. They have people tell them what's happening in the social environment, the psychological, what's happening with people spiritually, what's going on with their souls, what's happening with their life as the family members, what's going on on the, on the street level. He has advisors telling him that. And they're telling him, Mr. President, you got to work. Your theme should be, we got to fight to save the soul of America because America is falling like the moon is falling. But the only difference is the moon is locked. The law is locked. God locked it. The natural law in creation, it can't speed up. It can't slow down because God created it that way. That it has to operate on that speed that Allah set it on or it would die. But unfortunately, the free will of human beings and the free minds, they do whatever they want to do. And sometimes it leads to their own destruction. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. With God's name, the merciful. Benefactor, the merciful Redeemer. Ashhadu la ilaha illallah wa wahdahu la sharika la. I witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah alone, the one and only. There is none like unto Him. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. And I have a witness that Muhammad the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Prayers and peace be upon our Prophet, to whom the Quran was revealed 1400 years ago, is Allah's messenger, prophet, to all of mankind. 
Greetings again to our brothers and our sister here at Masjid Muhammad in Jacksonville. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings to our Juma Conference line, those of you all who are listening. Greetings to our Facebook live audience and our YouTube audience. Our YouTube channel is Al Islam Worldwide Ministry or Imam Yahya Abdullah. Now, when you go to YouTube, please be so kind as to subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber, just subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. If just subscribe to our YouTube channel. All you have to do is type in YouTube in the search bar, Al Islam Worldwide Ministry, it comes up, or you type my name, Imam Yahya Abdullah, it comes up and you can subscribe to our channel. We will appreciate that. So greetings to you all around the country, the United States of America, Bermuda, and all over the world. Greetings to all of you again. And happy Thanksgiving to those of our dear Christian family members who are observing their sacred day. And as I said, now the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said reportedly that Allah has given every nation its ceremonial days. Yes. Now remember, I'm speaking, this was said 14 centuries ago. So it applies today. There was no Thanksgiving, I mentioned it earlier. There was no Christmas being celebrated, not that either. That's coming up in the time of Muhammad the prophet. No. But what he said applies for today. Every nation, every people, see, he's speaking of the world. God showed him that. In Al Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil what? Alameen. Praise be to God. All praise be to Allah. Evolve, Lord of all worlds, all the systems of knowledge. So back then, it's referencing societies. I can show, I can give you that as an application, as a, uh, uh, how it applies to the evolution of nation states. God evolved these nations. And he told Prophet Muhammad, I am the evolver of all the worlds, all the systems, science, all the systems of knowledge, and there will be societies and civilizations that will evolve that are not present in the 7th century. America wasn't present in the 7th century. Great Britain wasn't present in the 7th century. Eh? These nations came later, but God already told the prophet. So he's a prophet. Prophesied. So he says, Allah has given every nation its ceremonial days and hours or two Eid al-Fitr, the celebration after Ramadan, and Eid al-Adha, the celebration on the 10th day for the pilgrims that are at Arafat or Hajj, on Hajj. Those are our two holidays. We don't have any more. For the Muslim world, those are the two holidays. Now there are Muslims who pick and choose and celebrate uh, uh, the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad never did that, never said to do that. But it's, uh, if you, you want to do that, okay. But for all the Muslims all over the world, the close to two billion now, two sacred holidays, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. And we observe the same here in the United States of America. So Hanukkah is coming up to my Jewish friends, brothers and sisters. Blessed Hanukkah to you in a couple of days. That's coming up for you. And happy Thanksgiving to all. All right, in concluding now, the second part of this. Today, with economics and social justice, two things I want to give you before we pray. And uh, we'll make janaza for two of my friends that pass. Uh, some of you all here may know them. Hatik, Hatik Muhammad, who was security for Imam W. Muhammad for a long time. Dear friend of mine from Los Angeles, California. And Abdul Kareem Muhammad it used to be in Gainesville. Uh, uh, Mikhail, you might know him. He used to be down there with us in Gainesville selling papers with uh, Mahdi. Raymond would know. So if Raymond, you're listening, uh, Kareem, he passed. Uh, that was with us in Gainesville, Florida. He was living in Atlanta. So we'll make janazah for them. Gai, have some funeral prayer for them after the salat. So two things we want to bring to our attention in the second part of the chutbah. Today, in America, and I don't know if this is any place else in the world, 
And listen to the language. Today is called Black Friday. Two meanings. Black Friday. There's nothing racist in that now. And this is economics. You're a business person. You always want to be in the black. Not the red. This is their cultural language now. So here, black has a good meaning. Good connotation. Not something to be shunned. Not the black plague. Black Friday. The day that most of the merchants and business people are looking forward to, right after Thanksgiving in America. I say in America, because I don't know what this phenomenon is around the rest of the world. But these are marketing people. These are marketing geniuses and experts that create all of this stuff and come up with it. Yeah, this is Black Friday. Y'all need to rush out and spend all your money. It's genius. It's marketing genius. It's seriously. I'm not running out spending mine. And you shouldn't either. Just know these are marketing people behind this now. But the language, Black Friday. Why they don't say White Friday? Because there's another message. And the second message is, yes, this is the Friday that black folk going to give us 95% of their money. They have $1.2 trillion. Did you hear what I said? Trillion with a T. $1.2 trillion GDP. More, that's more money than Saudi Arabia, any of the nations out there. The, the other, America is the most powerful economic nation on earth. They said if you separate the African American GDP, gross domestic product, in America, it's 43 million of us. Take us and isolate us as a nation, we would be the 15th largest country on earth. Did you hear that? Speaking to you African Americans out there now. Larger than Nigeria economically. Though our numbers are less, 43 million. Larger than Saudi Arabia, economically. Kuwait, Qatar, oh, economically. Larger. We will be the 15th largest nation on earth. So we've been programmed, African Americans, and that's why they use this language. Two meanings. Black Friday. Black for profits. We're going to be in the black. But we're going to be in the black because blacks are going to put us in the black. More so than anyone else. I'm not naive. I know there are other consumers out here. But nobody spends more of their money as consumers than the African American community in America. These are facts. Stats. Look it up. Go to Nielsen.com forward slash African American spending habits. Go spending. And they'll give you. And the money keeps growing. So 1.2 trillion. That's, that's what? 12 zero. 95% of that money will not circulate in the hands, unfortunately, of the African American business people. The African American entrepreneurs will not see the majority of that money. Because they've been programmed and brainwashed to give 95% of it to other folk. During Christmas, when the Christmas money comes up, it's going to be the same thing. So, brothers and sisters, we have to correct that. That's why I brought this to our attention. We have to correct that. Let us not be, I'm not telling you don't spend, but if you're going to go spend all that money, $1.2 trillion per year, reverse it. Spend 95% with African American. This ain't no racism. This is common sense. I'm not a racist. Islam is against racism. This is not racism. This is economic common sense. No other ethnic group in America, no other social group in the world spend their money with other groups more than they spend it with themselves other than the African American people. No other group does it. And when I was living in Dallas, 
I used to say all of the time, we're the only people that I'm aware of, and nobody ever corrected me, we're the only people in history, sadly, that finance our own oppression. Nobody else has done that. Nobody else have financed their own economic oppression other than the African American people. I have, I, I'm a student of history. I haven't read that anywhere where anybody has done that. So we have to turn it around, but we only turn it around when we become conscious. And Reagan, President Reagan, when he was the president, you know what President Reagan said about the African American spending habit? He said the African American dollar is unconscious. And he also said it has no multiplier effect. Now, you don't have to be an economist to understand that. Simply put, that means your money benefits nobody because it, but, but, but it comes in and goes out. It doesn't multiply. Quick example that we pray. And these statistics vary from time to time. They say in the Jewish community, our brothers very smart with money and finance. Their dollar turns over in their community 20 times before it leaves. That's a multiplier effect. That means 20 people, if I count 20 of you all in here, the way the money works is I give it to Mustafa, he give it to Kassim, he give it to Abdullah, and so on and so on and so on and so on, until it gets 20 persons. And it never leaves the hands of the African American to the 20th person has touched it. So everybody's benefiting from that money. And in the European American community, they say it turns over at least 12 times. Same principle, multiply effect. In the African American community, Hispanic community, about six, seven times, Korean, the same thing. Everybody's turning their money over. African Americans, in hand. No multiply effect. Comes in, goes out. Now there is a multiply effect, but it don't benefit us. Because I told you earlier, 95% of that $1.2 trillion on Black Friday from the hands of the black folk, putting other folk in the black, it helps them. It will turn over and it's circulated in their communities. It doesn't benefit the inner city, the urban core. We got to change that. But you won't change it if you're not conscious of it. Now, before you spend the money, think is there an African American this is common sense, this is intelligence ain't nothing to do with no race the money green or plastic is there an African American business, woman, man, entrepreneur, that I could spend this money on for this product or service I'm getting ready to purchase before I let it go? Is there somebody in our community that I can spend this money with? So that's how you think. And then after you've gone through that process, analyzing, Wait a minute, I don't have anybody else to uh, this service or product that I need. Now that should be the only time you let that money go out of your community and out of your hand. If you have to go find that brother, find that sister on the other side of town for that product or that service. Now don't just get anything. I'm not saying just throw your money away now. Make sure they got good product, good service, but that judgment, you don't use that with anybody else. You just go give everybody your money. So we got to change that. Turn that money around and let that money circulate in our community and we will see changes, big changes take place in the United States of America. We have $1.2 trillion GDPs every year, annually, annually, every year, $1.2 trillion that we're spending, but 95% of it goes to other folk. Let us change that. And I'm, I know I'm on Facebook and I know I'm on Drew our conference line, but we have a big audience on Facebook. So you all spread the same message, share it, spread the same message around the country. 
You don't have to tell the Africans to do this. They do it. You don't have to tell the Saudis and the Pakistanis and the Indians and the Bangladeshis. You don't have to tell them to do that. Koreans and only people you have to say that to are African Americans. Our Lord, grant us the best that this world and this life has to offer us. And grant us the best that the next life and the next world has to offer us. And save us from the punishment of the fires of sins. And oh Allah, have mercy on mankind on this earth. And please remove this pandemic from this earth. And me, it comes a lot. Thank you. You all space out. Some of y'all are too close. We got plenty of room up here. Uh, Ron, can you move, move that chair and this thing out the way, please, so they can have some space for Salah? <coughs> You know, we have to stay vigilant and be careful. You all, like I say, many of y'all will keep up with the news like I do. And they're telling us now there's a South, what is it, South African variant that's possible. I pray a lot doesn't come to the United States of America, but we want to be uh, as vigilant as much as possible. <clears throat> now, those of y'all who are on Facebook for the first time praying with us, uh, can you move that camera a little bit closer, uh, Ishmael? And just make sure we good. You make the same rakahs, two units of prayer. You can see me, you can hear me for the Jummah. And we finish the Salat, like I said, we will make Janazah for two of uh, our brothers, my friends. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Malik Yawmiddin. Ya can abudu wa ya can estain. Ihdina siratul mustaqim. سراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين ألم نشرلك صدرك ووضع عن أنقى وزرك الذي أنقى ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإنما على الأسر يسرا إنما على الأسر يسرا فإذا فرقت فانصر وإلى ربك فارقب الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نبض وإياك نستعين اهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا Amen. 
أمين قل هو الله أهد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أهد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ربنا لا تزل قلوبنا بعد بديتنا وحبنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاد الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين let us make janaza stand now to make janaza ghaib ghaib means absent for our two brothers my friends and our peace and condolences go out also to the family of uh, uh, El Haj Malik Shabazz, Malcolm Shabazz. I believe his daughter passed also, Malika, so keep her in your prayers. They did Janaza for her already in New York. Uh, but two brothers, Brother Hati Mohammed, and then the other brother, I think you know him out of, uh, uh, you do know him, I don't remember, Brother Kareem out of Gainesville. Used to be with Big Mahdi in Bilal. And he was living in Atlanta, Georgia. So he passed this week, Brother Kareem. So <clears throat> we make our four tack beers. And then on the third and fourth tack beer, we make the dua for our brother. The first tack beer, for those of you all who are new, new Muslims, maybe here, and, I, and I'm remiss by not explaining this to you quickly. Uh, we say Allahu Akbar. I mean, tack beer means to glorify God. We say Allahu Akbar. God is greater. The first tack beer, we recite Al Fatiha, the opening chapter. Uh, you, you can see it if you're okay, my friend. You are standing? Okay. The second tag beer, Allahu Akbar, we make the prayer of Ibrahim. Those of y'all who are new Muslims on this, the prayer we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Okay? And the third tag beer, we mention the names, Hadith Muhammad and Kareem Muhammad, for short. <clears throat> uh, and we make dua, whatever dua, supplication, or prayer you want to make for them. Fourth tag beer, Allahu Akbar. Same, you finish the dua supplication, and then we make taslim, greetings, peace. Only one time to the right side. Well, only one to the right, because we're praying and hopeful and prayerful that our brothers receive their book of deeds in their right hand, and that they are as happy as I mean, companions of the right hand. Okay? So our intentions here to make Salatul Janaza Gaib, absent funeral prayer. My brother Hatif Muhammad and Kareem Muhammad. Allahu Akbar. <coughs> Allahu Akbar.
الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ما الله peace mercy be upon our two brothers and grant them paradise. Uh, brothers on the way out the door, make sure you stop by the charity box, bucket, put your name on the uh, list, contribution. Those of you all who are on Facebook, thank you all for supporting us. Those of you all who do, you know who you are. We appreciate it. You want to support our efforts here, Jacksonville, Florida, go to our website, www. AlIslamWorldWideMinistry.com Tap on the donate icon. You can donate online. If you prefer to mail your payment in, as some of you do, and we appreciate it, you can mail it to address your checks. Al-Islam Worldwide Ministry, P.O. Box 3204, Jacksonville, Florida, 32206. Thank you all very much for joining us. Be safe. Don't let you... God down, your G-U-A-R-D, don't let that down. Be vigilant. And we pray. Everybody put those prayers in that this South African variant don't, don't affect us here. And we our prayers are with the people in South Africa. And I forgot to mention, I said two things at the second part. Uh, we thank Allah that the Ahmad Arbery family in Brunswick, Georgia got justice. All three of those people that murdered that brother going to prison for the rest of their lives. In the deep south, Georgia, Brunswick, Georgia, Georgia is the state with the most lynchings behind Mississippi in history. And you had 11 European Americans who saw a human being, one African American, and they found those three people guilty in the deep south. Things are changing. Can't paint everybody with a broad brush. All European Americans are not racist, and all African Americans are not worthless. I heard somebody, one of the civil rights icons, say that. Okay? So thank Allah for justice for Ahmad Arbery. It's unfortunate that he was an unwilling sacrificial lamb for social justice. He had to lose his life like George Floyd. So things are changing in America, albeit slow, and we applaud those jurors for having the courage and the decency. To see a human being and not the color of that brother's skin. Uh, join us next week. Thanks for joining us. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. Same time next week, Masjid Muhammad, to my prayer, 12.30 p.m. Be safe. Happy Thanksgiving to you. The rest of your holidays, if you're traveling, we pray that you have safe travels wherever you're going, visiting family or coming back home. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum.